Hello and welcome to the Redhead and the Bearded Beauty. We are back. We're back. It's 2023. Mm-hmm. We haven't done one of these in over a month now. It's December 22nd, I think, is what Lonnie told us. Yeah, we're only doing this because Lonnie Wright emailed us about it and he, was upset with us. Lonnie uh, really misses our, our beautiful faces. He's one of our two outside of City Hall listeners, yes. so we've got to capitulate to what he wants. Yes. So. Although he... We're we're starting this thing with the council podcast where we ask them a question that I'm not going to tell them ahead of time and make them debate it. Um, and he gave me a question to ask them tomorrow about subflooring, and I'm completely nixing that. Yeah, it's like it, well, it was two layers of flooring. Yeah. Which one's a subfloor? Yeah, which which one is the subfloor? I would give my opinion. I gave it to you before this, but uh, I've got friends that are like. Contractors, contractors and stuff so i don't want to sound stupid and act like i know what i'm talking about right now but well like i think like a subfloor is a subfloor and then you might just have two layers of flooring on top of that right yeah so that that was i'll go ahead and say it my my guess was that if there is no true subfloor under it then the bottom layer is your subfloor yeah and if there's an actual subfloor not just another layer then that's right. your subfloor underneath it yeah so well that's, that's that's my explanation lonnie you can correct me if i'm wrong so i probably am no nah, so it's fine I'm actually having some plumbing issues. I had this weird thing this week that like, uh, I'm just going to say this to Lonnie so that he will weigh in. But like, uh, if I turn on my sink, the shower will turn on. Somebody screwed something up really bad. But like, it's new. Like, it's just like new. Jason and I were messing with it. So like, we need to, uh, maybe I'll just have Lonnie come over and look at it. Lonnie, I think he has some connections. He can help you out. So did you install it yourself? No. Oh, okay. No, because that, I mean, that wouldn't surprise me then. Like, <laughs> I turn on the sink and, like, the <clears throat> toilet runs or something like that. Like, that wouldn't surprise me if I did it myself. But this is new and it's been fine. You know, I, this is going to digress off the topic a little bit here, but it reminds me of one time my, my sister-in-law, she had a leak in her uh, shower. Yeah. Like, it was one of those tub showers. Yeah. And I guess it was leaking back behind the wall. Oh. And the contractor that she brought out, his solution was to drill a hole in the wall to let it just flow back into the tub. Are you serious? And I'm like, I don't think that's right. I would be so mad. Like, yeah. don't mess up my wall yeah. because, oh, yeah, so, that's not anyway, okay. Yeah, you definitely need to get that looked at. Like, ASAP. Yeah, it's, it's just weird. Do you, like, got to go turn on the sink and then go over and test the water in the shower? Well, it's, I mean, kind of. So, and it, it started when it was really cold. So I thought it was just, like, some of the pipes freezing. But, like, now the the shower will turn on by itself. But the water pressure is increased if you also turn on the sink. It's a weird situation. That is very weird. Yeah. And it's more water pressure if you turn on the hot versus the cold. I tried to yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know what to tell you that. I don't, I don't know. I was I've never heard of that. It's new too, like it has. I haven't had an issue. This is now a plumbing podcast. Yes, your plumbing podcast. Our next our next Podcast topic the city is, is plumbing. So. Yeah. <laughs> what do we have going on? <laughs> so by the time this is out, um, we will have been able to talk about a large economic development announcement that, you know, um, our partners at the Greater Wichita Partnership and the state have really been working on for quite a long time. It's going to be really great for the, the region. I'm not going to give any more details, but um, I'm sure you've read about it or watched it. Um but it has just really great impact for our region. So that's, um, that's an exciting announcement. And yeah. So yeah. Regional look, growth is looking forward to that. Yeah. Always so, positive. So, yeah. Um, I made my first media appearance today. out in front That was of, your first. That was my first. That's not your of, first for the, for the mayor's media briefing. That's my first time actually getting up and speaking in front of the media. Oh so. yeah. No, for the, for the mayor's media briefing, maybe you've yeah. spoken to the media before. I don't think that I have now that I'm thinking back on it. I've like, emailed them and done all that sort of stuff yeah. but i've never actually done an on camera interview with them it's fu- it's funny like because when you do media quotes and stuff they'll say like city of wichita they very rarely say tyler chivalwine yeah they, there was one time, was I, was one like, time. I, f- I finally made it i got my name in the paper and it was for something not good but it's yeah. never it's never good when we take the interviews yeah. though yeah, like we take when the interview, it's not good we take the not fun ones like we give the good news to everyone else but um yeah. Yeah. But most of the time when it's good news, like a city city of Wichita spokesperson said. Spokesperson, yeah. We get we get spokesperson. Um, but some like the I think our titles like and get run the gamut. Yeah. To what they call us. Yeah. People will ask me 
my title. And I don't know about if, if you get this too, but it's like, I don't know. Do what I'm told. Do what I'm told. <laughs> Do what I'm told. So, no, uh, yeah, that was my first time talking in front of the media on his on the mayor's media briefings, uh, just giving an update on our boil water advisory or, you know, whenever we have another one of those, hopefully never, but we now have a system in place to be able to notify all the water customers and timely matter via email, text message, and voicemail. So now how does this differ from the county system too? So the county system, they also have something in place and they had just announced that they have a system you can opt into. Yes. You can sign up for alerts via, I think it was like weather or health, public health alerts, other different public safety announcements. You just sign up. You can give them your email, your phone number. Um, I, I can't remember if they do text and voicemail as well. I can't remember what exactly is there, but it it's well. opt in. It's not one of mm-hmm. those things that we can just send it and everybody gets it. Um, yeah. It's separate from their system that is the reverse 911 that just lets everybody in an area know. So, yeah, this one's opt in only. So, we still encourage people go to wichita.gov right there on the home page. Mm-hmm. There's a sign up for emergency alerts. It takes you to their page and you can get uh, sign up for alerts from the city of Wichita there. Yeah. If you're not a water customer or you're not the primary account holder where your mm-hmm. information's there and you want that, you can sign up and get the information there as well. Yeah. But uh, the reason we do that is our water customers, we can't really send any other sort of alert to our water customers other than boil water advisories. Yeah. Yep. We can't use that because they have not signed up for that Mm -hmm. um, so we can only do water information to them so it had to be separate for that purpose yeah and we're we're not going to spam you with city news we're not going to be like sign up for evolve through that service this is true emergencies so so we uh a lot of back and forth on that trying to figure that out as we got to this point you know we're like why can't we just do that and use this for that and it's it was a lot to work through but we finally got there so the the legalities of things of these things are much more complicated than you you'd think you're just like Okay, yeah. just send me a, a text message when we have a boil advisory. It shouldn't be too hard, but it's actually excessively. Uh, we started working on this after the first one. Yeah, after the first one, we yeah. started looking into it. And I found that, you know, there there was a lot of places that had these and that was like, okay, we only have email. We only yeah. have text message. Um And then we ran into all sorts of issues with that. And then just the scale, the number of people we need to notify was driving the cost through the roof. And so we want to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. And, you know, we're paying 18,000 for a year for the system we have now. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you some doing it some of these other ways, piecing it together would have been a lot more than that. Yeah. And so, and the, the county system is really great. Definitely go sign up for that. But this gives us just another layer of communication to ensure that our water customers are getting those. Exactly. So, So, yeah, there was a lot to work through, but we're glad we're finally there and moving forward. Yeah. So really, really one, cool stuff. On to the next one. <laughs> on, don't say that. Not, not no. what, next project. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, don't. <laughs> now that we have a system to more readily alert people, we won't have a bo- boil of water advisory yeah, for now, quite a long time. Now that we're there and hope, you know, we hadn't had one 20 years prior. And <laughs> yeah. We, that was, <laughs> okay, we found a gap and we we addressed it and yeah. wish we could have gotten it before the second one, but. Isn't Garden City still under a water boil advisory? Garden, I think Garden, Garden Plain. Plain. They were Sorry, Garden City. early this week. I can't remember. I don't think theirs has been lifted. I could be wrong. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't seen it being lifted either. So, so we're pretty lucky. Ours was what? Just under? Maybe just over 24 hours. Just over 24 hours. Yeah, yeah. which is really fast. That's, that's so. pretty uncommon, I think, in those situations. So. Yeah. Our testing abilities help us lift those sooner than a lot of communities. So we are lucky. But yeah. Um, yeah. All right. What else is coming up? Um, that's the big one right now. I'm working website stuff, uh, Weird. with the rebuild of the website. So that's what I meant by on to the next one, oh, the next yeah. big project. So you're going to be deep in the website. That's yeah. going to be a, um, that's going to be a lot of work. So hopefully by a third quarter towards the end of this year, we'll have a new website in place. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know I've talked about this a lot on the podcast, but I'm, I'm ready. I'm glad we're finally at the build stage. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, earlier today, you and I did a video with, uh, Tia Ramont of transit she is amazing, um, really knowledgeable about um, civil engineering and and downtown streets and making cities more vibrant through transportation options. 
Um, but one thing that they're going to talk about Tuesday is uh, the downtown streets conceptual plan. So we'll be looking at, if it passes, looking at um, doing more of those conversions of one way to two way streets. I am all for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My opinion doesn't matter, but I am all for that. All for personal opinion. Yep. Um, you heard it first. City staff inserting our opinion into things, <laughs> which we're not supposed to do. No. <laughs> yeah. We we saw a lot of like favorable uh, results from Emporia. Like people were really excited when we did that full conversion. So. Yeah. Um, St. Francis was the same way. I think a little further back than that, it used to be one way and now it's two and see a lot of activity along that street, a lot of businesses. Yeah. The businesses were really happy. It uh, creates more like ease to get into businesses and walk. So really excited for that. I mean, the the needs of communities are ever changing. So this is what our community, you know, is looking at doing, making us more vibrant. So I I think some of the roads, depending on the size of them were proposed, uh, Going the two way, one yeah. lane in each direction. Yeah. Um, and then there's a couple, at least one. I know Main Street, I think, was one that had two lanes in each direction. Two lanes in each direction, yeah. So, so that'll that'll be good. We see just outside of our windows on 13th floor, like people go the wrong way all the time. I told Tia in our video, like, I was driving home last night and someone turned the wrong way down first. And um, they were turning, I think they were. Where was it? I don't remember the cross street, but they were confused about which way they could go from turning the wrong way. So it was very stressful for them. But. I, I can say that, yes, it is very stressful to do that. I, yeah, I why, would you, that. why would you know, Tyler? I have done that. Um, mm-hmm. I was going to an appointment and I was I was pretty stressed out. Um, and I, I thought I was, I guess, what's that? First street that goes east. Yeah. I thought I was at first and I turned left at second from Maine. Oh. And I, I immediately see cars yeah. about half a block away. And so I... I just got all the way to the right and stopped. Yeah. And I was like, man, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're the two ways at that point. So I guess it gets confusing. So hopefully that makes things a little bit easier for pedestrians and businesses and drivers and everybody. Yeah. So make it safer for everybody. And yeah. So yeah. Yeah. a little easier. Um, we've also got, what else is coming you, up? You, recently you were highlighting the meeting at over at the Indian center, uh, talks that are going on about that and the parking situation. Yeah. We had the very first, um, just public input meeting at the mid America, all Indian museum. Um, there's a, there was a water reservoir down there and they, they found out that the parking lot that they put in back in the day, um, is starting to show stress on those water reservoirs. So, uh, what it can't be is a parking lot anymore. Can't be a parking lot anymore, but we're trying to take those first steps to engage the community to tell us, you know, what do they think? What should it be? What's the best option for this parcel of land? So nothing's been decided. No funding has been decided. Right now, we're just in the very beginning stages of feedback. We have a, um, there was that first public meeting. There will be other public meetings, dabs, all that stuff. Um, and then we have a, an entry on forum. So our uh, resident feedback platform to give us your thoughts like do we need more parking should we do shuttle do we need just green space what do you what do you think so yeah definitely go find out all those different tools those different yeah. avenues we have and give your opinion there so i yeah. know uh, people are concerned about the hill <clears throat> that sort of thing if possible yeah you know, nothing's been decided we'll just stress no. it but that's something that has come up and already i heard <clears throat> i heard some folks say this was interesting um how these like things get started but some folks were thinking it's like an old sacred um native american ground and it's not it was an old pool that got filled in with debris <laughs> it's the is what the hill is made of <laughs> yeah it's like oh this is an old sacred ground no it's not it's in it's debris no, it's, an old pool. <laughs> it's, it's debris that we created we created this hill out of debris <laughs> so Sounds good. Speaking of, <laughs> of that hill, that's kind of my segue here. Oh, yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow night, uh, Wichita Park and Recreation. Snow globe. That was kind of a dangerous to use that as my, you know, people might think we're ripping it out. But anyway. No, right, we're not. We're no, no, nothing's I, been I needed a transition, and that was my uh, transition to this. Wichita <laughs> Park and Recreation <laughs> are holding their snow glow event. Snow glow. The snow glow was put on uh, with the help of Snow Bro. They were putting snow down earlier this week. They'll be doing some throughout the event. So hopefully it stays a little bit chilly still so people can use that. I drove by there this morning and saw the snow there. So that's exciting. Thought about just jumping the fence and going sledding today. 
Do we still have the footage of a council member? I don't know if I should say their name. No, we probably shouldn't. They uh, we we wiped did out. Yeah, the first one we did, we did we did like video and stuff and promos. We took the council member out there, and they went down the hill. And the first shot was just a complete wipeout. But they were they were great sport about it. It was a lot of fun. But put yeah. a GoPro on their head. Put a GoPro on them. Yeah, and yeah, cool. just wipes out and watch it slide down the ice. It yeah, was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it it was good footage. But yeah, they were they were really they had a great time. They were really good sport. But yeah. Yeah. I think um, this council member, I'll leave it at that, uh, was even trying to quote something from uh, Christmas Vacation as he started off, like the sledding scene. So I've never seen Christmas Vacation. They said, later, dudes. Oh, right, so oh yeah. And, so. I didn't know what that was from at the time. I am so disappointed. Yeah, in I've never seen Christmas Vacation. I've also never seen... Um, Actually, any of those movies. Any of the vacations? I've never seen the vacations. That's kind of like our Star Wars discussion that we have every once in a while. You need to go back and watch the vacation movies. At least summer vacation and Christmas vacation. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't. I can't say that the European one I've ever watched all the way through. And Vegas vacation, yeah. If you those got are, nothing else to those do. Those are more vacation movies than I thought they had. Yeah. I thought there was like two. I think there's more and there's been spinoffs and all that stuff, but... Those are the big ones that I know of. I'm going to skip me. Skip me with so, that. Yeah. Not into it. Speaking of vacation, huh? see what I did there? No, I don't know where you're going with this. <laughs> summer vacations right around the corner and kids might be looking for jobs over that summer break. Oh, yeah. Yes. Summer. It's, it's February and it's cold outside, so I'm having a hard time making that mental transition into warmer weather. But yes, summer is right around the corner. And uh, kids, students, 14 to 17, uh, Looking for jobs this summer? You might be interested in the Way to Work program with our housing department. Yeah, Nichelle we, Williams. She's she, awesome. Yeah, she's going to come on here in just yeah. a moment and talk about uh, the Way to Work program. So stick around. We're going to bring Nichelle on, and uh, we'll be right back. The City of Wichita's paved street network has more than 5,200 lane miles of residential, collector, arterial streets, and expressways. Each year, outsourced pavement maintenance efforts are proposed and submitted for approval in the Outsource Pavement Preservation Program. As part of this program, a number of treatments have been successfully piloted in recent years. Not all of the treatments produced a brand new driving surface, but together they allow the city to optimize its returns on limited maintenance investments and better preserve Wichita's paved street network. The following are examples of some of the different treatments being applied to our city streets. A preservative seal is a clear, petroleum-based rejuvenating agent specifically formulated to penetrate into existing asphalt surfaces and reinforce the binder that holds the pavement together. By keeping new pavement surfaces dense and flexible, it serves to seal against water erosion, inhibit oxidation, and improve the overall durability. Because preservative seal dries clear, it does not immediately affect the appearance of treated streets. Crack seal is an application of hot liquid rubberized asphalt material placed into or above moderately sized pavement cracks. The treatment prevents moisture from seeping in and further damaging the pavement section. A microsurfacing seal is a polymer modified cold mix paving system that is applied to existing pavements using a specialized mix and paving machine. The treatment is used to reduce water penetration, correct minor surface irregularities, and extend the surface life of residential streets. Additional benefits include increased skid resistance and improved aesthetics. Microsurfacing is sometimes preceded by a scrub seal. A scrub seal is used to quickly and affordably fill extensive cracking. It is constructed by spraying asphalt into existing pavement, dragging a broom across the surface to scrub the asphalt into the surface cracks, spreading gravel over it and pressing onto the gravel and pressing the gravel into the asphalt with the surface roller. An ultra-thin bonded asphalt surface consists of a thin, hot asphalt layer over a special liquid applied asphalt membrane. Both the layers are applied in one pass using a special spray paver. The membrane mitigates water erosion and provides a superior bond to the existing pavement. The treatment produces a smooth pavement surface and extends the useful life of arterial streets. Additional benefits include increased skid resistance, reduced noise, and improved aesthetics. Concrete repairs include the strategic full depth removal and replacement of concrete pavements in order to address myriad pavement distress, including spalling, pop-outs, and settlement. 
Many of the city's older brick crosswalks suffer from significant deterioration. The city is entering its fifth year of a pilot program to replace and select a few brick crosswalks with stamped colored concrete. The pilot has proven highly successful to the point that many of the city's now worst rated crosswalks no longer warrant complete replacement. All right, welcome back. Um, we are gonna kick things off. We're gonna be talking about the way to work here in just a, a second, but first off, we have a guest. You wanna introduce yourself and your title? Good um, afternoon. I am Nichelle, uh, my current Nichelle Williams. I currently work in the Housing and Community Services Department on the 10th floor here at the city of Wichita. I am the program manager of the WISCAT program, which stands for Wichita, Cedric County, Community Action Partnership. So you can see why we call it WISCAP. That's long. That's long. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see WISCAP is the shorter version. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the easier way to discuss that. I like it. You do a lot. You do a lot with the city. I do. <laughs> I do. I love it though. Mm -hmm. I love it. As long as it's got something to do with community partnership, I'm all for it. I love so that. yes, 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 yes. All right, All right. Very good. We, we like to kick these shows off a little game we call Two Truths and a Lie. Okay. So I'll, I'll go first uh, to get us all kicked off here to kind of get back into the swing of things for this year. So my daughter and I did a daddy-daughter date to the Wichita Sedgwick County Historical Museum this past weekend. Absolutely loved it. A lot of great information there. So I went there with some facts. So construction of the building, the old city hall, was completed in 19, or 1892 with the clock tower being added in 1917 with along with uh, the thousand pound bell all the city offices including the police and fire departments in wichita's first public library were housed in the building and the clock tower was added in 1917 whoops i already added that one i went back and put that on something else my bad <laughs> uh city offices moved to the building we're in now in 1980 november of 1980 so which one's the lie I think we moved into this building in the 70s. You looked at my paper, didn't you? No, I didn't, but you're also wrong. <laughs> I'm wrong again. <laughs> you're also I'm wrong. not getting this year off to a I good think, start. I think you told us that you went with your daughter like two weeks ago to the... No, that, that part was true. Was it? I don't know. I, it was just this last <laughs> weekend, but no, that wasn't part of the facts. Either way, I can't remember. It's been a long week. So. It's been a long week, apparently. So, I was like, wasn't that last week? What, you what are your thoughts, Michelle? Which one do you think was the lie? I would think I've moved into the building. That's true. We moved into this building in 1975. 75. So, yep. That was still before I was boring. Yeah, mm -hmm. me as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <But> we <still laughs> Don't that feel good, though? That uh, does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But we still have some of the same furniture because I see, like, years on the bottom mm -hmm. of it. Uh, uh, the trash can in my office was was kind of grungy so i covered it with stickers and no one said anything to me but i'm like it's a, it's an improvement yeah <laughs> that, that is nice when we say stuff's older than me because mm -hmm. i've been around here so yeah. long i'm starting to be the one yeah, of the old people it makes me feel so. good i'll be like oh mm -hmm. yeah i wasn't born then yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right megan how about you okay um so today is, is groundhog day as we film this and i have groundhog facts not a fan of the groundhog right now, by the way. Because he, he said that we're going to have six more weeks of winter. That's a liar groundhog. Um, <laughs> okay, so groundhogs are closely related to squirrels. They are the largest ground squirrel, and they're also known as marmots or land beavers. Um, so groundhogs are impressive climbers, but they can't swim. And um, they have, uh, they are the most distributed marmot of all, of all of the marmots. Um, they live hmm. as far south as northern Alabama to northern Canada, sometimes even found in Alaska. Those are my groundhog facts. I'm going to say they can swim. If they're related to beavers somehow, they can swim. You're correct. They can swim. They're very good swimmers and can climb, climb trees. Did not know that. Uh, groundhog facts. Groundhog Did facts. not know that. All right. What about you? Hmm. <laughs> wow. I was on the spot today. Um, <laughs> so let's see. Um, so since I'm here for to talk about work, let's talk about work. All, All right. right. All right. So um, the TWTW program, which stands for the way to work. Um, we currently hire um, youth 
from the ages of 14 to 18. Mm -hmm. um, this is going to, we're going into our 12th year of youth to work with us. That's cool. Yep. And um, we currently have hire two teachers who are possible social workers. That's cool. That's really neat. So which one do you think is oh. the lie? Oh. I think it's 14 to 17. You were right. I saw you glance at your oh, face. Right. Cheater. I, <laughs> I did cheat, but cheater. I had just read that right yep. before we came in here. So. <laughs> you were right. We are 14 to 17 and not 14 to 18. But that was kind of hard. That I think I did pretty good. Oh, I was like, that was very good. I had, had I not read this <laughs> literally right before you walked it in. It sounds like yeah. Yeah. 14 to 18 would be like the norm. All yeah. high school students. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, yeah. Like so we're 14 to 17. That's awesome. All right. Before we get too deep into mm -hmm. uh, the Way to Work program, tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do for the city, and then who you are outside of work. Um. Oh, wow. So currently um, I oversee the WISCAP program. Mm -hmm. The WISCAP program has several different layers to it. So we have an IFD program, which is Individual Family Development. And what that program does is we focus on overseeing and helping people who don't have jobs find jobs, help them pay for a secondary education and get a certification. So if you want to become an equipment operator, you want to go to WSU Tech and you don't have the funds to do that, then we help pay for that, to wow. help, which allow you to get that certification so you can find a job. Um, so we partner with several different agencies in the community. Um, everyone has heard of the WeRap program. Mm -hmm. I mean, how yep. could we yeah. not know about that? <laughs> yeah. So while that program is no longer being offered anymore, we have a sub part to that is our housing stability. I also oversee that, and what that does is focuses on people who are homeless, who are needing to become housing stable. Mm -hmm. And we help pay for them like a month of rent or a deposit. So just give them a leg up to keep them involved so that way they don't become homeless. So we focus on homeless prevention and helping people find a place in that. Then we have our summer youth program, which is also the one we offer in the summer. So we'll literally just start to open up applications on that on the first. And then we will start them and they'll start working in June and then they will work all the way up into August. So there's several different um, layers. I also oversee the FSS program which is a family self-sufficiency program and that program literally is all about exactly what it says family being self-sufficient so our clients who are currently receiving section 8 um, a housing choice voucher what they have an opportunity is to deal with some one-on-one -on -one case management to help empower them to where they're able to earn escrow money and save money um, to build equity so that way they if they want to purchase a home some want to purchase a home that's our end goal mm -hmm. um, but some of them want to say I want to pay and go to college or I would like to get a car so that way I can have some solid transportation so yeah. they earn escrow and so what this group of my team does is they focus on developing goals how do we get these different goals established so we can make sure that you literally are able to obtain them and you're able to build a literally a lifelong of longevity? Um, so there's several different components that I do, um, but I love it once again, um, because once again, we're focusing on the entire family from the youth to the parents to people who are currently on Section A. Um, we, there's nothing that you could be going through or need that we cannot offer to support you to get you moving and going in the right direction. I would say so people think of just the housing department mm -hmm. as it's only about the house it's really not you think of the people who are in the home the people who are in the home is what makes the home and if we're able to help the people in the home then the home can be sustained and we can make those self-sufficient so we're not just the housing department and that's why it's called housing and community services that's amazing you yes. guys do yeah. so much we do so much our director Sally Stane is always pushing us into a new gear mm -hmm. gearing us up to think of some new ideas and new ways to stretch us um how do we consistently continuously think outside of the box don't just do what has always been done but what can we do differently how can we tackle and also how can we partner and collaborate with so many different people in our community so that's one of the things she is always kind of enforcing with us and communicating with us is let's think outside the box don't only think of just giving them a home how do we ensure they keep their home sustain their home and become self-sufficient in their home so yeah that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is so much. And I think the average resident just isn't aware of 
everything that you guys do. Right. So it busy. starts with a call. Yeah. I tell them to start with a call. We have great people that are sitting at our front desk who can mm-hmm. say, well, what is it that you're needing? And then let us get you to the right place. It's not just a one call. While we get a lot of call volumes from our housing joys voucher portion, um, there is so many additional components that we do offer that we're hoping that a lot more people tap into that we can do for them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So tell us about the Way to Work program. My babies. <laughs> <laughs> um, my babies. Um, so believe it or not, our way to work program is um, 14 to 17 year olds. And these are young people who are literally looking for jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, we ch- our primary focus is ones who currently are in low income housing, um, pam- families who are receiving low income. And we want to be able to tackle that family and be able to say, here, let us get your youth and get them involved in some positive things. Help them learn a skill set. You think of a 14-year-old, they've never had a job. And while we understand that, we work with a lot of great people in our community who literally are saying, we know that this young person hasn't had a job. And so we're not expecting a lot for them when they come to work. We just wanted to show them what it looks like to show up on time, Mm -hmm. iron your clothes, Come well groomed and be able to say hello and answer the phone politely. Yeah. It's not nothing a lot of times real, real big and rigorous for them, but it's just a small thing. And so when those learn those small skill sets and you've been in the program for about two years, then when you want to go and work at a call center job at 16 years old, you'll say, hey, I worked on this and learned this through the city throughout the summer. So I automatically know what the expectation is and what it needs to be for me to be able to work there. Uh Um, So it's those different things. We get them for about 10 weeks. Um, Every other week we provide them workshops from financial literacy on how to show up for a job interview, effective communication, how to um, communicate with other adults. Believe it or not, not all adults um, know how to effectively communicate with young people. So we're trying to teach our young people how do you effectively communicate with an adult when you feel like you've been treated unfairly or you don't like the way that their tone is. Um, You don't have to be aggressive in that. So we provide several different workshops. Um, This year I'm really excited is because we're really – are able to partner with Wichita State University. And so we're focusing on putting our youth up on the campus of Wichita State this year. And Wichita State is going to allow them to where find out what it is that our young people really like. So if you were going to college tomorrow, what would you want to do? Someone will say, I want to do engineering. So we'll get them involved in some workshops so they can just tour the campus, meet them, and see exactly what the campus is offered. I believe if we sprinkle a few nuggets in their minds at an early age, if they'll remember it. And so by the time they get to high school and they get through high school, I should say, then it's easier. So they say, I remember my freshman year, I went to Wichita State University and they were able to offer this support to me. Or I remember when this person came in and talked about this workshop and I found out these different things. So that's kind of what the work, the summer youth program is. We know we can't fit it all into one summer, but we want to just be able to start the seed process for them mm-hmm. and be able to gradually watch them grow and we have we watched a lot of great young people really sprout That's now to touch on that you know a couple years ago i did a video uh interviewing one of the kids who worked at a local car wash mm-hmm. and i also uh interviewed the owner of that car wash and i guess he was able to get a full-time job from that um talk a little bit about maybe some success stories of the kids and their experience with the program Oh, man. So we have a one youth when I came on. So I started in 2019. Um, 2020 was our first year for the summer youth as I was here. I um, mean, there was a young man who was 17 years old um, and he was just looking for a summer job so he can make money. And we actually had him go over to the Witches Hall Transit. He went over to the Witches Hall Transit um, and worked for the summer and they were so impressed with him. They hired him on. Unfortunately, he was 17, but he, and so in August when we were done, he had turned 18 in September. They held the job for 30 days. Wow. He applied in 30 days. And so in 30 days, once he applied, they ended up bringing him on with the transit. So he started there in 2020 of August. Well, I just got word that he ended up promoting and starts his new position out at the airport on February the 6th. Oh, that's awesome. So he's nice. still with the city, um, but this was his first time ever having a job and just came in and learned some skill set. They wanted him when he started at the transit, they wanted him to pick up a skill and they wanted him to get a CDL. Mm-hmm. And so once again, the housing department, we were able to offer him and pay for him to go and get a CDL. So we paid for him to get a CDL. He got it, stayed on with transit and just built a skill set for that. 
And lo and behold, um, we just got word that he's now getting ready to start out the airport wow. on February the 6th. I know. How many 18-year-olds can say I that they know. have that experience, something that they'll use their entire life? Like, you could work anywhere with a CDL. Yeah. He's getting a pension. He's mm-hmm. getting benefits. Like t- I wasn't even thinking of that at 18. Yeah. Oh I was God. like, no, yeah. don't take anything out of my check. I need my whole check. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. He's, and he's just, now, he's just now getting ready to be 20. Wow. So, I mean, just... It happens, Mm -hmm. but I give kudos to Transit because they took time and saw something in him he probably didn't see in himself, and they realized just a little bit of guidance, connecting him with the right mentor over there at Transit and making sure he believed in himself and helping him would help him gradually grow. Oh, Oh, it's one of my favorite stories. That's that's one of my favorite stories. So, yes, he's done. And he's done an awesome job. We hear from him from time to time. Mm. And so I talk to him. And so he's Mm. he's done a phenomenal job, has his own apartment, paying all of his bills. He's doing great. He's doing great. Doing great. I know. I know. I know. I know. So on the on the flip side of that now, you guys are always looking for employers as well to hire on these kids. Please find them for me. <laughs> <laughs> what type of employers are you looking for? Any. Really? Any. Because you'd be so surprised. Last year we had a landscaping company come on called Holloman's Land Services. And we knew it was the summer. And I was like, there is not going to be nobody <laughs> want to be out in the heat cutting grass. <laughs> I had two kids who absolutely loved it. Wow. Now I will say the owner took them to lunch all the time, made <laughs> yeah. sure they ate good, that could do it. but he <laughs> knew that it was possible good ways to feed them, yeah. you know, to give them great kudos, um, offered them great money. Wow. Um, and so once we were not paying them anymore, he offered them, hey, you want to come and finish out with me for the rest of the summer? And they stayed. So you'll be surprised. I always tell an employer, um, anything that you have, if you have a business mm-hmm. and you find a need, then allow a youth to come in under you. My, I always do my caution. If you just want a kid to come in to be your bathroom cleaner and you want to stuck them in the back room, we don't want to send them there. Yeah. We truly want young people to get engaged in businesses that can literally help them learn a skill set. So at the end of the summer, when I say, what did you learn? I don't want them to say, well, I can clean a good bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> I want them to tell me I learned how to show up to work on time. I learned how to look people in their eye when I talk to them. I learned how to respond to emails, like little small things like that, that we don't we take for granted as being adults, but they've never been able to experience before. And um, we tell every one of our youth at the beginning that while you are working at all these different businesses, the great thing about it is you're a city of Wichita employee. Mm-hmm. They get a city of Wichita badge. They have a city of Wichita shirt that they wear for the summer. So everyone knows that they are a city of Wichita youth. And that's really big to put on your resume yeah. once you're continuously to look for a job. Yeah. Absolutely. That's really cool. I always hear like you can't get experience without a job. You can't get a job without experience. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But how many kids go through our program each summer? So um, we currently last summer we had 137. Wow. My goal is 175. Ooh. I know. I'm pushing it. <laughs> when I started in 2019, they had roughly about 75 to 80, mm-hmm. and then I came in and said I want 100, and they was like Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> And then I said, we are at 100. And so last year, my goal was 150. I got 137. And so they thought I was going to say 150 this year. But let's just, <laughs> hey, I man. always say if you reach high, yeah. if I hit 150, then I still met my goal. Yeah. But if I get 175, then I went past my goal. So my goal is 175. So that's why we need that. so many businesses to just get involved. Um, and you don't have to take a lot. Some of them take three or four. Mm-hmm. There's some businesses that just take one. Law department takes one every year. And yeah. and I'm so grateful to them for taking it. I have one young person who they took two years ago. She's getting ready to graduate and wants to go to law school. <gasps> amazing. amazing. Right. But That's cool. it's because the seed was planted yeah. in our law department. That's so amazing. those are the things that I think is you'd be surprised of how many people that if you literally just spend a little time with a young person that we can really have great impact. And while we might not see that always on the news of the great things about mm-hmm. our young folks, they are awesome young kids. Um, yeah. They're awesome young kids. And so I don't dwell on the what they're not doing. I try and find people who is going to help me focus on what they are doing. 
Yeah, we see them throughout City Hall every yeah. summer. You know, lots yeah. of kids out there just working hard. Yes, yeah. Yeah. yes, yep, yep, they yeah. are. They are busy. Maybe we can convince Jim to get the communications department our own, the way to work. That'd like be three or four. You know, I would love it. Mm-hmm. I'm holding you to it. All right. You heard it here on the podcast <laughs> first. I heard it here that. first. Bro- broken news. Um, so the kids, when they have a certain job, how do they get assigned to each job? Do they get a sign up for, hey, I want this one, or how does that work? So we interview them. So um, on March the 10th, we'll have at the Wichita Metroplex, all of the youth who have applied will come in for interviews. We're not expecting them to be perfect. We're just expecting them to show up for the interview. Yeah. And th- by them coming in, then that'll let us know, like, what would you like to do? Mm-hmm. Not what is your college career goal, but give me an idea what you would like to do. So if they say, I would like to work with kids, then we look for them a summer camp. Um, if there's something that comes open and they say, well, I want to work in the medical field and I want to work at a doctor's office, then it's my gear up in March that I have about two months to try and find an agency or a practice that will take one youth. So usually every youth who wants to do something, um, it drives me to find, I say, I have one. I have one kid and this is what they really want to do. I need your help. Um, so most of the time we do, we match them all. Um, there are some kids who come in and say, I want to work at a doctor's office. And then I'm saying, so are you realizing like you have to see patients? There's going to be people who come in. Some are going to be sick. They're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And then you have some who's like, I just don't want to sit still. Like, mm-hmm. and, you know, you have different kids. Um, there's a kid right now who is all about theater um, and absolutely loves to work over at Caltown. I awesome. mean, it is he and. I got an email from him already saying, I'm going back to Caltown. <laughs> and it's so hot, and they dress up in those uniforms. Mm-hmm. But that's why I say it's always something for everybody. What some kids don't like, you'll be surprised. Another kid does, and he literally loves it. So when he graduates from high school, he's hoping that he can get hired on at Caltown because he loves the theater. He loves the scene. He loves the being there. He loves the dress up part about it. And look, it was a great match. And they want him back. And we're going to send him back over there. That's where he wants to go. That's but it awesome. gives him skill sets as well. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So where can kids or businesses go to get more information? So they can go onto the city of Wichita's website under our housing department. Um, click on TWTW. They can always just type in the search engine, the way to work. We're the only the way to work program. So it would literally take them to that. Um, shoot me an email. They can always email me and I can send them the direct link. If you just go to the regular city of Wichita website for applications or our human resources department, the way to work application is on there. So in NeoGov, I have the application there. (laughs) So our HR part department is so awesome with helping us with that. But that's exactly where that is now. We will right. we will also pin those posts mm. on our city which are social media pages yeah. right at the top so you can just click on those as well. Yeah, we have a QR code so mm-hmm. you guys can put that up as well and so they can scan that. But yeah, that's exactly where you can get it and I would love 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 different partners. We always are looking for just some new um, partners to come and get involved with our young people each year. So we look really we look cool. forward to that. It's it's awesome. A great end of the year they get to kind of see the accomplishments and See the different things that they've done, and you'll be surprised at the shy, timid kid that comes in, and then their last day of work, you'll be like, I can't get them to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can get one of those. Be like, I, well, when they came in, they were really nervous, and now <laughs> we can go in our office, and we they've set up everything. You know, you'd be surprised. It's what a little bit of mentoring yeah. um, does. And we're not asking you to keep them for 40 hours a week. We pay them 20 hours a week, so it gives them just enough, a little bit, and a little bit to gain some money and some different skill sets Mm -hmm. but not enough to bog you down to where you'll still be able to do your regular jobs and different stuff like that so we're just asking you just to sprinkle a little yeah just a little knowledge in their buckets i love that yeah good all right uh so we like to end things out with Mm -hmm. a dad joke okay um we kind of sprung this on you (laughs) so do you have a do you have a dad joke i have a couple of them okay so what is the king of all inches the king of all inches. Go, go ahead. The ruler. Okay. All right. Oh, I should have seen that coming. Gosh, oh. how do we miss that? I don't know. I, <laughs> so my family finally gets me. I got a calendar for Christmas mm-hmm. 
that every day it has a new dad joke. And that, that was today's. So I'm like, that is nice. perfect. I needed one. Nice. So, That's good. Yeah. I don't have any. I can't. I'm horrible at jokes. No, you're fine. I, I, I got one more. For okay, you. yeah, so let's my, go. my daughter this morning was mad at me because I forgot her birthday. Oh, today's her birthday? Yeah. Which is ridiculous. I didn't even know it was today. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, I, I screwed that one up. My bad. I was trying to like. I was yeah, like, I no, don't get it. No, that wasn't good. Say it again. Should I, should I do it again? Say, do it again. Do it again. Because I'm right. confused. So my daughter blamed me for ruining her birthday. Okay. It's ridiculous. I didn't even know it was today. Okay. There we <laughs> yeah. go. All right. That <laughs> makes. I get that. Okay. I, I'm good. like off to mm-hmm. a bad start. No, hey, you're good. I was there. <sighs> You know, I, yeah. a lot of jokes are always over my head, I, and I just laugh at them. Some people don't know I didn't get it. Because right. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, nope, missed that one. But nope. hey, same, great. Same. <laughs> All right. Um, so I had to go to the hospital recently, and um, I had accidentally swallowed a bottle of invisible ink. Um, it took me five hours to be seen. I should have mm. probably gone to the ICU. Mm hmm. Yep. Invisible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I was see, I was caught it. Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm there. I got it. Don't <clears throat> yeah, don't ask me any because no. I'm horrible. No. Yeah, I only have I've heard the same I knew where that was going. I heard <laughs> yeah. I've heard it like similar you like should have the, ruined but it. the doctor can't yeah. see you, can he? Doctor can't see you, yeah. No. <laughs> Yeah. So very good. All right, All right, Michelle, thank you so much for joining You're welcome. us. Welcome. You guys are so welcome. Thank you for yeah. having me. This was fun. This was yeah. fun. <laughs> this was so fun. So you have to invite me back at the end of the summer. Yes. So I could tell you how it went. Yeah, we can bring one of your students yeah. on. Yeah, yes. absolutely. That'd be fun. So yeah. Yeah. We have to bring one of them on so you can talk to them. Hopefully I can get the one that started out shy. And yes. Now I can say and mic honest. back, scoot the mic back. They're done. <laughs> <laughs> Cue the closing music. Yeah. <laughs> Cue the music. Cue the music. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. All right. And with that, so thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, email them to us at social at wichita.gov. Again, thanks for watching.